Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sam, and today I want to give you a brief introduction to using your own studio lights or off-camera flash. As photographers, utilizing our own lighting opens up infinitely more creative possibilities and also just sharpens our eye for seeing light in general. Understanding how to use these lights and how we should set our camera up uh, is a different story, and that's the part where a lot of us seem to get stuck. My goal for today's video is to kind of expedite the process for you so you can start achieving better images uh, faster than I did. One caveat that I must mention right out the gate is that it is important that you understand how to shoot in manual mode on your camera and what the systems of uh, aperture, shutter, ISO, and white balance are. Now for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be using two different lights. For the indoor studio portrait, I have the Flashpoint Evolve 200. This is a 200 watt second light that comes in uh, at about $350, depending on the kit that you buy. 200 watts is great for almost any indoor studio application. I use these almost every day. When we go outside for the second demonstration, I'll need a little bit more power to battle the sun. So I have my Westcott FJ400. This is a 400 watt second light. And in most cases, especially for individuals, provides enough power for almost any outdoor application. This light comes in at around $560, depending on the kit that you buy. Now for both demonstrations, for my light modifier, I'm gonna be using the Westcott Okta 36 inch Rapid Box. I will also be shooting on my Nikon D750 with the Nikkor 85 millimeter 1.8 lens. Okay, now let's get started. So while this uh, video is focused more on the settings of the camera and how to set up the lights, I do want to briefly go over the positioning of the light and how I'm setting that up. Uh, both for the indoor and outdoor portrait, I have the light about five feet from my subject. So as you can see here, uh, it's about five feet forward coming in from their left and the center of the light is actually cascading past their face. So you get more of this soft, uh, kind of nice feathered light here. And I have the light turned uh, at about a 45 degree angle or a little bit less. For almost any portrait involving a light, I start with an ambient exposure. So I have the lights turned off right now. For the indoor portrait, I wanna get an exposure that's basically completely dark to ensure that there's no natural light bleeding into the shot and that my light source is the only thing affecting my image. So one other thing I'm gonna do to make sure that there's no other strange color shifts in the image is to turn off any room lights. A lot of these bulbs are incandescent or tungsten, so their light is a little bit warmer than uh, my strobe. A good frame of reference when you're starting out for the camera for the shutter speed is to start at 1 200th of a second. I'll explain more about this when we do the outdoor portrait, but for now, just make your anchor point 1 200th of a second. My ISO is set to 100 because I want as little noise as possible and my aperture is set to f4, uh, so I get a little bit of a fall off on the ear, so there's a little bit of a shallow depth of field. I think that'll look really nice. Studio strobes are what's called daylight balanced, which means they're putting out the same color temperature as that of the bare sun, which is about 55, 5600 Kelvin. So I have my white balance set to 5500 Kelvin on my camera. So let's start with the ambient exposure and see how that looks. Now that I know that I have a completely dark shot with my ambient exposure, I'm gonna turn the light on. The power of this Flashpoint Evolve 200 light along with speed lights are measured such that one over one is full power, one half is half power, one quarter is a quarter power, and so on and so forth, all the way down to, I think on this light, one one twenty eighth power. So for starters, I'm gonna just try shooting at one thirty second power and see how that looks. That way I can adjust up or down accordingly until I get the desired result. So this shot is definitely a little bit underexposed. I'm gonna try turning the light up to, let's say one eighth power and we'll see how that looks. So I like this shot, I think that's a great exposure, it's a nice shot of David. Uh, let's say I want to have more depth of field so no part of him is falling out of focus at all. So 
like anything, we turn down our aperture to let's say like F9. And as a result, I'm gonna have to turn my light up. So I'm gonna play around. We're gonna try one half power and see how that looks. So I like that exposure as well. Another thing I can do to change my exposure, of course, is to adjust my ISO. I generally try not to go beyond like 800 because I want no digital noise in my shot. If I find myself needing to turn it up really, really high, then I need a more powerful light at that point. Now that I have a shot inside that I like, let's go outside and test this out and play around with the shutter speed a little bit more and I can explain how high speed sync works. So I'm out here with David. Uh, we moved downtown for our outdoor location. So for the first shot, again, we want to get the ambient exposure first. For this uh, outdoor portrait, we're gonna be exposing for the background and not worrying about how the subject looks yet. Uh, so once again, I'm gonna start at 1 200th of a second for my shutter. Uh, my ISO is at 200 this time. My aperture is at F4, so I get a blurry background. And my white balance again is at 5500 Kelvin. So now that I have an ambient exposure where the background is the way I like it, I'm gonna reintroduce my light back into the equation. Different from uh, Flashpoint's lights, light power readings, uh, Westcott's lights are read from 1.0 to 9.0 in one-tenth stop increments, so 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on and so forth. I don't understand the difference between the two. Uh, it's just how different brands uh, measure light power. So I'm gonna start at 4.0 and we'll see how that looks. So I like that exposure. Now let's say it was a little bit underexposed or a little bit overexposed. Naturally, I'm just gonna turn my light up or down a little bit. And this is called chimping. Uh, you basically guess and check until you get the exposure that is desirable to your eye. Uh, I don't recommend doing this on a uh, commission shoot. If you're being paid to do something, make sure that you have practiced with the lights that you're gonna use and that you have a good idea of the uh, relative power of the lights to the scene that you're gonna be working in. Now, what if I want to have a darker background in the scene? I can lower my aperture and then naturally I'll have to turn the light up a little bit so I'll get a darker background while maintaining the exposure of my subject. But let's say I want to maintain the aperture that I have. For example, I'm shooting here at f4 and I want to get that nice soft out of focus background. What I can do is adjust my shutter speed. A lot of old lights can't fire at a rate faster than 1 200th of a second with the camera or else the light pop like won't be able to sync with your shutter speed. Fortunately, a lot of lights nowadays have a feature called High Speed Sync, or HSS. What this allows you to do is crank up your shutter speed, which will affect the background of your scene when you're using a light. The shutter speed is specifically going to brighten or darken your background. I've turned my shutter speed up to 1 800th of a second. I've also turned my light power up to 7.0. Again, I'm chimping, and we'll see how this one looks. Let's give it a try. So that's your introduction to off-camera flash. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Uh, thank you, David, for being my model for me today. This guy's actually my bartender, and he agreed to put his beautiful face in front of my camera for me. If you do have questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to help however I can. This was a, a challenging process for me, learning how to use lights years ago, and I'm hoping that this helps you get there a little bit quicker and helps make sense of the world of using flash, using strobes, in your photos. Thanks again for tuning in guys and I hope you have a great day.